Life has different seasons, and sometimes you're in this summer season of life where everything is going right according to your goals and your plans and your habits and your rituals. But other times, no matter how hard you work and no matter how much you push and act and do, things do not work. And sometimes it actually feels as if things are falling apart. And no matter what you do, everything you touch, rather than turning to gold, just shatters into a thousand pieces. So if you're in one of those phases of life where you feel like everything has gone to hell and you feel like you're in the process of rebuilding, this is what I would do to rebuild my life in the next 24 hours. What's up you guys, Alex Hine here. So before we jump in, right below this video is a link for the wait list for my program called the Reinvent Your Life Program. And if you just wanted someone to give you a specific easy habit to do every day that you knew would improve your life, you know, your fitness 50%, your finances 50%, your relationships, your purpose and meaning, all 50 to 200%, and you just wanted a tiny daily habit to work on every day to improve your life. And then the next month, a new tiny daily habit to improve your life in a little bit of a way, like these videos. My Reinvent Your Life program is exactly that. Now, it only opens up once per month and once or really twice per year to my entire audience. So if you want, join the waitlist right below this video for the tribe because it's exactly this, but for an entire year where we work on every single quadrant of your life. So the first thing that I would say, rather than immediately jumping into goal setting mode and figuring out your habits and your rituals, is really trying to find a way to feel good. Because if you've ever truly been at rock bottom, you sure as hell know you're not getting up and hitting the gym at 7 a.m. and setting goals, right? Just getting out of bed is the challenge. You know, and people with severe depression, getting out of bed for years or a decade is the challenge. So this kind of really linear goal setting doesn't really work. But I love this precedent set by Susie Batiz. So Susie Batiz is the founder of a company called Poopery. It's like a toilet spray, right? But what many of you probably don't know is her story, where she had attempted suicide, she had um, been through multiple divorces, multiple bankruptcies, and she was almost 40 when she determined that she was the worst entrepreneur ever. And she said she would have attempted suicide again, but this time she had kids. And Susie at that time was just saying that, you know, she decided that entrepreneurship was literally the worst, most destructive thing for her and her health. And I feel that way all the time too. But what happened next is what really impacted me when I heard her story. She said that she decided she was going to quit and give up on entrepreneurship because she was so physically bankrupt, her, just her health, her spirit, everything, actually literally bankrupt, right? She went through a bankruptcy and she said she just spent the next several years healing and she spent the next several years trying to feel well again and feel happy again and feel motivated again and feel like she enjoyed her life again. And she said that ironically, as she discovered this new principle of resonance or dissonance, and the more she healed, and the better she felt, ironically, the more successful she became in her life. And it led to a next company called Poopery, which is a $500 million company from the former worst entrepreneur ever, right? So when you're at rock bottom, I find that this idea of resonance or dissonance should become the game. The game is no longer I'm gonna set my goals and, and build this incredible life. The game is really survival at that point. If you really are truly at rock bottom, or if you've ever been there, you know that ambition is not possible. Goals are not possible, right? You don't even wanna see people or leave your bed. So what I recommend is just trying to figure out how to feel good on a daily basis. Just how to feel good. So every day, all you do, you're not chasing any goals. All you're doing is what makes me feel resonance? What makes me feel dissonance? Resonance is a feeling of feeling excited, turned on, lit up, creative, like you have a skip in your step, like things can possibly optimistically happen. And the feeling of dissonance is a feeling of fatigue or decrease in energy or resistance or you don't really want to do it or just everything is tough, right? All these barriers are stressed out. Just everything feels hard. And I know when you're in this phase of life, it may feel like everything is in the dissonance phase. But every day is this matching game. If today, resonance, all it means is I'm going to walk down to the street, get a cup of coffee, and just sit and watch the cars go by and think about my life. Trying to find that one thing that makes you feel good should be your number one goal. The second thing I recommend is what I call the napkin math. The napkin math is as you begin to play this game where there is no goals, you're just in survival mode. 
You're just playing the resonance dissonance game. What can I do? Even if it is the smallest thing, like a shower, going to find a cup of coffee, journaling, talking to a friend or walking your dog. The only thing that makes you feel good. As you begin to do that more and more, you chase more and more things that do that. When you begin to feel a little bit better, what I recommend is go to that same coffee shop that you're just sitting there and pondering your life, get a napkin and just write down what three things if they happened in the next 12 months would make this year amazing. And that's not going to happen overnight. That's not going to happen in the first day when you're feeling like crap, right? But as you play the residence distance game, I'm going to stop everything I don't like, my job, those friends, whatever it is. I'm going to do one or the one thing I really like. As you feel better, this exercise will feel more inspiring and exciting. You know, as I was going through this phase of my life myself, and there are cycles, it is cyclical, it will happen more than once. That's the good news and bad news. You know, I sat down one day and I realized, what would be the three things that changed my life this year? Number one would be having a good friend group. Because even if I never succeeded, I would be happy in life. The second thing would be more energy. If I had some energy in my life, even if I wasn't achieving anything, at least I could feel content and happy day to day because at least I would feel well. And the third thing I determined would be working on a side hustle that was really exciting. In other words, regardless of whether or not the side hustle worked out, the process of working on it was really, really exciting and thrilling to me. So I wrote down these three things on a piece of paper that if these three things happened in the next 12 months, it would be the best year ever of my life. And I just carried around that napkin with me for that year and I put it in my wallet. And every day I would just look at it. And every day I looked at the napkin, my brain would just think, what would it take to get close friends? Or how can I have more energy? Or what is that project that I feel really excited about? And then your brain starts playing Where's Waldo matching recognition game. And you will find things that will help you reach that goal. The third thing is to trust the nonlinear. That is, you often reach your goals by not directly pursuing them. I met the best friend group of my life when I moved to Los Angeles after a year of trying hard the traditional ways to meet friends. And I said, screw it. I'm just going to pick a couple of hobbies I really like. One of them was I always wanted to learn bachata and salsa dancing. So I picked up this bachata and salsa class. I went three, four times a week. And then three months later, I had the best friend group that I'd been trying so hard for a year. I went for the dance for a hobby to feel good. I got the friend group. You know what else I got through that? A woman I was seriously dating that formerly I had been doing all the apps yet again for a whole year. And then I gave up and I said, I'm just going to do whatever makes me feel the best alone. I chose the hobby and I got another thing. So there's a great quote that man searches for one thing and often finds another. That very often many of the best goals in your life are not going to happen directly by pursuing them, but by going after something indirect, right? So you want more energy? And actually, instead of trying to fix your sleep, for example, you focus on having a more fun, happy life, and then you end up sleeping better. The indirect paths, the winding paths, are often how you end up finding the life that you really want. And to not think that everything has to be a goal or linear or logical will help you a lot. As you get more energy, for example, you'll be more social. And as you're more social, you'll meet more people. And as you have more energy, you'll be more confident. As you're more confident, you'll meet a person that you always wanted to meet. And as you're more positive and more upbeat, you're going to get better opportunities in your job because now your other people are sensing that or you sell more as a salesperson. So understanding that often you will get the thing you want non-linearly really helps give you peace that you never know when your next big lead or next big opportunity is going to come or where it's going to come from. So if I was in the depths of hell right now, that is what I would do in the next 24 hours to get back on track. And again, if you guys want, I've put together this 12 month program. It's super affordable. It's one month. We focus on one part of your life and each week, a tiny daily habit video and an affirmation to get you back on track. So if you want, join the waitlist for reinvent your life and I'll catch you guys in the next videos here.